do for today is I believe I can see. Brother Aaron, can you get that? <coughs> what I sent you today. Y'all see that up there? Now, if you look, there's two ways you can look at this. You can look at it as to say, I believe. I can see. If you notice now, the phrases are separated. Right. If you look at it the other way, I believe I can see. There's a pause there with the comma, but the two are connected. So in other words, what the Spirit of God is saying to us this morning is, we have to get to the point where we just believe. Hallelujah. Because some of us, we have to see before we believe. And God, the Spirit of God is concerned because he's saying, my people do not trust me. My people don't, don't believe that they can overcome. They don't believe that I'm going to move in certain areas of their life. See, our walk now is not about what we see. We must believe. See, really, technically, the message is technically in one category, I believe. Period. Because if we're waiting to see, we've missed it. See, because I believe now puts me in a position where it doesn't matter if I see it or not. Because I've already seen enough. Hallelujah. So uh, the, real, the real theme is, I believe. I can see. See, because there's a gap in between there, and if you're waiting to see, you're missing what the Savior has for you. Amen. Amen. We walk by faith and not by sight. You might as well get it in your head that if you're going to walk with Jesus, you're not going to be able to see it. You're going to have to trust him. Yes. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what it looks like. We must trust him. The devil is busy today. He doesn't have much time. You know why? Y'all serve the king. Amen. Hallelujah. Huh? Oh, hallelujah. In the world. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Before I get into the scriptures, keeping Jack here, in your Bibles, just go to Hebrews chapter 11. I want to read one scripture. Keep your finger now in John chapter 12. Sometimes we put them on the board. Sometimes we want to hear the pages come. Amen. amen. When you have it, say amen. amen. If you don't say still looking. <laughs> what a good God we serve. Uh, I believe. I can see. Uh, Y'all there? It says, by faith, I'm reading from the New King James Version, it says, by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made by things which are visible. Hallelujah. I needed to just set the tone for the message that everywhere you look, and whatever your eyes can see was established by things you can't see. That's the God we serve. The very pews, the carpet, the lights, the fans, everything you can see was created by something you can't see. And we are living as a church because we're looking and saying, why hasn't God done this? When you should be saying simply, I believe. Hallelujah. Now let's get back to the scriptures in John 20. And today we're going to focus on areas of our life where we've been conformed to unbelief. I mean, you know, we are still struggling to believe, though. Oh, yeah. 
some of you right now in this church have a situation going on in your life and you really don't believe. You believe Jesus died. You believe your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, but you don't believe God is going to take care of the situation that you're dealing with right now. Yes. God is saying, how can you doubt me? Huh? So we're going to focus on, now when we talk about uh, uh, our conformity because of our forefather Adam and sister Eve, we were cut off. So all, every one of us in this church, no matter how righteous you think you are, you didn't know God at one time. You didn't believe when somebody tried to talk to you about Jesus. I know I didn't. Now I'm not going to sit up and say I didn't believe in God. But I didn't believe him enough to come in this church and remove myself from my riotous living. See, believing, is, believing in God is one thing, but when you truly believe, you'll turn from your wicked ways and walk with him. Oh, hallelujah. So we talk about we have been conformed to unbelief. And that's why God sent his spirit. How many got the spirit in you? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. And the spirit is going to bear witness as he begins to take dominion over this flesh. Yes. Because the more, the, more, the more dominion the spirit has over the flesh, the more now we begin to believe. And the less now we are in control and the spirit now is in control, then we start to believe what he said. See, I've come a long way. There was a time I didn't believe. There was a time I had given my life to Christ, but I still didn't believe because my walk did not bear witness that I believed. Oh, hallelujah. Now, this story that Deacon Jackie is reading highlights a group of people and their problem now is they're bound to the finality of death and the grave. And they're hurt, they're fearful, confused, and subconsciously they don't believe that they will ever see Jesus again. Now notice I said subconsciously, meaning now they're not doing anything wrong. They have just been so prone that death is final. Everybody I know, when they die, that's it. Hallelujah. Then to add to their unbelief is the lingering effect of the degrading process of being crucified. So not only did they see their Lord who they witnessed all these miracles that he performed, they witnessed these great messages Yet now, they see him die. And because now they have been over, they're bound to the finality of death, like all of us. How I many of you, when you go to a funeral, you don't expect that person to get up? Yes. Am I right? Yes. If someone got up, we know. Listen. <laughs> I'm not going to sit there and tell you, I, would, I might think about it, I'll be honest with you. is based on what they are used to, what they are accustomed to. When someone dies, it's final. So now we have things in our life, and we have been simply conformed to unbelief. We simply, we love the Lord. Yeah, I, I, I believe he'll, he'll bless me with a job, but there are other areas we are doubting him. Hallelujah. And the problem is, we want to wait until we see it before we believe it. Yes. Hallelujah. Now, it's a strong possibility that the burial of Jesus took place within 24 hours after his death. This was a rush thing. Under most circumstances, the body of our Lord would have been flung into a common pit with the bodies of the two thieves. The thing we must understand about the lingering effect of being crucified, I'm sure now that added to the degree of their unbelief. Their situation of being bound to the finality of death, I believe it was enhanced through the process of witnessing Jesus being crucified.
crucified because it was degrading to be crucified. And to the point now where if it had not been for Joseph's uh, 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 Arimathea and Nicodemus, Jesus' body would have been thrown in a pit. Hallelujah. Unbelievable. Jesus had no estate of his own which to pay for a proper burial, and his relatives were either too poor or too afraid of the authorities to assume the responsibility. So those around who have witnessed God before them now have gotten to the place where it is over, Jesus is dead. Not to mention, look how he died. Somebody say, but God. But God. See, 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 the problem is they don't believe. And I understand that I'm not knocking them, but it's because of their conformity. See, we've been conformed through the flesh all our lives. Before Christ, we develop a belief system. That's why marriage is struck. Because when they come to the table, they bring their belief system. And because they don't believe the scriptures in Ephesians 5, where it tells you specifically how to handle your marriage, they end up in divorce. That was for somebody. So what I'm saying to you now is, what I'm trying to do is show you now how the enemy and through our belief systems, we can fall into a position of being conformed to unbelief. And I don't know who the spirit is talking to, but God is trying to wake his people up to say, how can you doubt me? Hallelujah. I'm Jehovah Jireh. Your provider. You've seen me work miracles in your life before. Do you think I've just left you? I haven't left you. I'm with you right now. You're looking at the fact that your daughter or your son, it seems like things are getting worse. Are you doubting me? Do you need to see your son delivered from the drugs to believe that he's already delivered? Do you believe, do you need to see your, your daughter in church for you to believe that I'm going to do it? Spirit of God is saying, don't doubt me. But I'm bringing up this situation with Jesus because this is a bad situation to look at. How he's dead. And then on top of that, look how he died. But somebody said once again, but God. God. And getting back to the burial. Now, the burial of the body was done in haste. Because it had to be done by sundown. Strips of linen referred to as grave clothes were used, as y'all remember in the case of Lazarus. The place of the burial was a private garden, probably Joseph's own rock-hewn tomb. The privacy of the garden allowed the women to be able to come early Sunday morning. I mean, no God had it all set up, didn't he? God had it all set up. Jesus, Jesus, look at, look at your God. Can I back up for a second? Jesus, now, how many of us know folks in the family, when someone has passed, they got to set up a go fund because they don't have the money for the burial or for a funeral. That was the picture, picture of your Lord and Savior. He came here on a business trip. He left glory to come here, and he, would, he, he dwelt in a poor atmosphere to the point where now he's honoring even his own words where he says, foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. But God had a plan. God used folks from the Sanhedrin, wealthy folks. He worked in their hearts, and they turned around and asked for the body of Jesus. Because they were in a position to do it, they had the money, they turned around and bought, spent, you could read in uh, New 25 where they spent a lot of money on herbs and spices for the burial. Hallelujah. God had it all planned. Just like he's got everything planned with you and I. Y'all hear what I'm saying? He's got everything figured out. Hallelujah. Then in verses 1 through 10 of chapter 20, we see the 
disciples and Mary are also focused on the burial. They are all so bound to the finality of death that they have forgotten what Jesus had said to them. Isn't it amazing that Jesus had told them in Matthew chapter 20, he said, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be betrayed to the chief priests and to the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and deliver him to the Gentile to mock and scourge and crucify him. He says, and on the third day, he will rise again. Well, here it is Sunday morning. Peter and the fellows are hiding out. They have forgotten what Jesus has said. Have you forgotten what he has said? Have you forgotten all the times he brought you through? Have you forgotten that time when you was going to lose your mind and somehow peace showed up? Have you forgotten the time when you didn't know you was going to make the rent but out of nowhere? He provided the money for you to pay the rent. And I'm going to step further. How many of you your tank was on E? And, 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 and in most cases, you were going out of gas, but somehow you made it to your destination. Have you forgotten when you thought you would never get over weed? You never get over alcohol. And here you are today. Close this up here and read these verses. Are you there in chapter 20? Amen. Hallelujah. Can you give me that next picture there? Hallelujah. Now on the first day of the week, who's that there? Mary Magdalene. What did you say then? She went to the tomb early. While what? It was still dark. She saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb, right? So then she ran and came to Simon Peter and the other disciples whom Jesus loved and said to them, they have taken away the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. They're still talking about the body, aren't they? They're talking about, they're concerned about the burial, right? Nobody's talking about maybe he rose from the dead. See, they are bound to unbelief. They have been conformed because of everything they've seen regarding death, that even though Jesus said he was going to rise, they don't believe. And Peter therefore went out and the other disciple and were going to the tomb. So they ran together. And the other disciple outran Peter, came to the tomb first and stooping down, looking in, they saw what? Linen clothes lying there, yet they did not go in. Then Simon Peter followed him and went in the tomb and saw the linen clothes lying there and the handkerchief that had been around his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but folded together in place by itself. Then the other disciple who came to the tomb first went in also, and they saw and believed. They didn't believe that he rose. They believed that the body was gone. Still nobody's focused on what Jesus said. Somebody need to get that. You need to focus on what he said. Amen. Not your circumstances. Listen to the Lord. Hallelujah. For as yet they did not know the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples, what did they say next? What did they do? Went away. Went away again to their own homes. Somebody say what? But. But, but Mary, not a man, Y'all have it, not a man. The brothers are hiding. Oh, here, oh, I hear what she's saying. Uh-huh. Listen, y'all, we need to pray and leave the sisters alone because the sisters are the sisters are all right, all right with me. I know some powerful sisters in God. We can learn something from our sisters. Oh, hallelujah. It says, but Mary stood outside by the tomb weeping. And as she wept, she stood down and looked into the tomb. And then she saw two angels 
in white sitting, one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus reigned.